This is a 1070 Ti Duke card from MSI. This card is supposed to be priced at $470 to $480, and it was when we originally filmed this review, but we had to add this part in because now it's $900, which makes it absolutely not at all worth it. However, in the event the prices come back down to $470 to $480, this review should serve as your guide. So, if you're watching this, just uh, basically use the review if the prices are reasonable, and if the prices are still $800 plus, then don't buy the card at all, period. And this one lands just between 1080s and the baseline 1070 Ti reference card with, of course, Vega 56 nebulously in the area, depending on how retailers feel at that day. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly, makers of the Conductonaut liquid metal that we recently used to drop 20 degrees off of our coffee lake temperatures. Thermal Grizzly also makes traditional thermal compounds for use on top of the IHS, like cryonaut and hydronaut pastes. Learn more at the link below. A couple of things here about this video card. This one might be appealing to you because it's a three fan cooler and it's reasonably priced. The cooler, however, is running a two slot form factor configuration. So a lot of the larger fan coolers on the market lately have been two and a half or even slightly more for the expansion slot size. And that means that although it will fit in a lot more builds more easily, it is using a much thinner radiator or heat sink if you prefer. In fact, it, it's significantly thinner. It's about half the thickness of what we saw on the recent 2.5 slot design for the EVGA 1070 Ti Ultra Silent or whatever they're calling it. So quite a bit different. MSI has tended to stick to two slot designs. Their twin Frozer coolers typically have used two slot designs, although there are some that have gone larger. And this one is what they're calling a tri frozer cooler. So three fans, tri frozer. It is not really as simple as three fans equals better though. It's not, more, more is more better because the twin frozer fans are taller uh, and a bit wider. So this is just going for three smaller fans instead. As for the efficacy of the cooler, we're gonna be focusing on that today. With video cards, as many of you know at this point, if you've seen our channel, the difference between card A and card B within the same class, i.e. 1070 Ti, is pretty small. In fact, the difference in gaming performance out of box is clock for clock, far more likely to vary based on the silicon quality than it is based on the actual card or the vendor itself. If MSI makes one of these and EVGA makes a similar one, the difference between them gaming wise and FPS wise is almost certainly going to hinge more on which one had the better silicon when you bought it. So for that reason, we're focusing on the thermal cooling abilities, the noise levels, and some overclocking potential versus the colorful 1070 Ti Vulcan X that we reviewed, all of which will come together to help us understand how good of a card it actually is. We also have VRM information coming out hopefully somewhat soon. That will be done by Buildzoid if you want to see the power component analysis from an overclocker's perspective. Let's get into thermals first. For the full testing methodology, as always, check the article linked in the description below. That contains our test bench and our test methods. Starting with a complete stock auto test for out-of-the-box thermals, we measured the GTX 1070 Ti Duke at about 49 degrees Celsius over ambient. And again, that's a delta T number. So it is delta T over ambient. For the GPU diode rating, we're at 49. And this was during our standardized power virus torture test. The MOSFETs operated at about 51 degrees Celsius over ambient with the hottest GDDR5 module measuring at 65 degrees. For the MOSFET and memory measurements, we are using K-type thermocouples that are one one hundredth of an inch thick. They are laser thin for a direct component contact measurement. And this is effectively a case measurement. We don't have many 1070 Ti cards tested yet, but these measurements place the MSI Duke markedly behind the only other 1070 Ti currently on our bench, the colorful Vulcan X. The Vulcan X operated about eight degrees cooler on the GPU temperature, two to three degrees cooler for the MOSFETs, though those aren't direct comparisons since they are different FETs, and about three to four degrees warmer for the memory. Keep in mind that MOSFET temperature here is largely irrelevant because all we're really going for is making sure it's within spec, which these are. They are well under spec, in fact, for both of them, although one is more under spec than the other. The Vulcan X had an unimpressive base plate and VRAM cooling solution, so these numbers make sense where MSI is a bit better for the VRAM cooling. The Duke is one of the warmest cards on the bench though, and part of the reasoning is because MSI's fan profile in VBIOS simply isn't aggressive enough. 
and the fans are kind of weak to begin with. During auto testing, the fans tend to stick to around 38 to 42 percent speed with an ambient temperature of about 21 to 22 Celsius, and this has them at about 30 decibels of noise. That's way too conservative. We've noticed that MSI seems to target about 66 degrees Celsius for the core temperature, and so they are adjusting fan speeds based on that target. This means that memory can sometimes run warmer because the fans don't need to spin very fast for the GPU to be 66 degrees, but the VRAM doesn't have any governance over the fan speeds. Here are some noise normalized numbers with thermals tested at 40 decibels normalized for all tested cards. The eye-catching thing here is that thermal performance improved when set to 40 decibels output, which is untrue for nearly every other card on the bench. This happens only for one reason. The fans are spinning faster at 40 decibels, despite 40 decibels being generally on the lower end of video card noise emissions. The Duke performs about 8 degrees warmer than the Vulcan X when both are at 40 decibels, with a GPU temperature of 45.4 degrees Celsius delta T over ambient. We're also seeing a MOSFET temperature of 45 degrees on the MSI Duke card, about the same as what the Vulcan X saw, and a 58 degree memory temperature, whereas Colorful ran 64 degrees. Speaking of noise, here's a look at that. Noise levels show the MSI 1070 Ti Duke toward the very bottom edge of the pack when at each RPM level, and this is a PWM signal to noise response curve. Most graphics cards like to keep their fans at around 50 to 55%, so we'll highlight that area of the decibel output, and that is used as a hard target in vBIOS generally. The MSI card's fans don't spin very fast and tend to max out at around 3300 RPM. They are admittedly very quiet for the most part until you hit 100% or so, but they are also ineffective at cooling. Again, considering 40 decibels was a faster speed than auto, the tuning is much different from most cards on the market. As for overclocking, here's our overclock stepping chart. We found the MSI Duke card to be stable briefly at 225 MHz core and 500 MHz memory. We ultimately began crashing in games with those frequencies though, so we had to step down to 200 MHz offset core and 450 MHz offset for the memory. Again, these are offsets, not the actual speeds. The clock averaged about 2050 MHz in this configuration, which is one part power limit and one part thermal limit. Pascal increases clock speed for roughly every 5 degrees Celsius on the core, and if the Duke were capable of cooling itself below 60 degrees in our room ambient of about 2022C, we'd see a couple megahertz higher clock. We also ended up peaking at around 2088 megahertz, though it hit a 2114 megahertz core speed for about half a second before crashing. That was with a 250 megahertz offset, which ultimately did not take. Here's our colorful Vulcan X OC table for reference. For this one, we got stuck at around 2088 megahertz stable average clock or 2126 megahertz peak frequency. The result is better for the Vulcan X, and the resulting performance in Firestrike, shown here with Firestrike Ultra, comes out to 5366 points versus 5315 points for graphics. This was done on repeated testing and is outside of error as we ran the test numerous times and averaged it. Firestrike Extreme has us about 200 points different as well, once again favoring the colorful card as you can see here. And now comes the usual reminder. These clocks don't necessarily mean you can hit these clocks. In fact, you might do better. You could do a lot worse. The difference primarily will come down to the actual silicon quality, much like the frequencies that you can hit out of box will largely come down to silicon quality, not to the card itself or the design of the PCB or really anything else. It's silicon quality first, then you start worrying about things like cooling ability because you've got that thermal limiter to worry about, and then from there, power starts to come into play once you're overclocking, but until then, not so much. So this card is an instance of a slightly below average cooler. It's not awful. They do run actually pretty quiet, which is an upside relatively, but there's a reason that EVGA, when they did their ultra silent version, fattened up the heatsink. It's because if you're gonna run quieter fan speeds, you do need something else to help deal with the heat, and that's generally more mass or more surface area, more specifically speaking. And this card, if you kind of, if we have B-roll shots of the side of it or anything, you'll see just how thin that heatsink is. It's comparatively really just about the same size as the heat pipes. So it's a lot smaller than what you see normally, and that's where the difference in thermal performance is coming from for the most part. The fans are a bit weak, but they're not the worst because again, they are at least somewhat quiet. And MSI does, as we show in our teardown, contact some of the power components 
with at least thermal pads connected to the fins of the heat sink. So you're getting some level of transfer, some nominal level of transfer between the VRM components and the heat sink, which is better than, for example, the Zotac Amp Extreme that we looked at previously. But it's just, it's simply okay. It's not that exciting. And, you know, as a, as a 1070 Ti for the price, it's not bad. You can find better, but uh, it's also not the worst thing MSI has ever made. They, we, have, we have examples of that on the channel, if you're curious. So yeah, uh, overall, not too exciting or disappointing either way. It is certainly warmer than the Vulcan X. I'm not sure what the Vulcan X is selling at in the US. It's been in and out of stock. Uh, we'll be looking at the 1070 Ti cards from EVGA somewhat soon, and hopefully one from Asus. But other than that, we've got some of the Strix and uh, PowerColor Vega coverage coming up sometime, hopefully before CES, but we'll see. The Intel bug is throwing us off a bit. That video should already be online as well. Subscribe to the channel for everything. As always, you can find links to this in the description below if you are interested in it. And you can pick up one of our shirts on store.gamersnexus.net or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. And of course, the mod mat has been a big item for us as well. store.gamersnexus.net slash modmat. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.